Monza is obviously one of the very, very special tracks uh, in the championship, not just because it's in Italy, obviously, but uh, because it's the, the, the fastest, fastest circuit of the season, which uh, uh, obviously requires quite a lot of compromises. Um, it is a track where in four points around the track we go well over 300 kilometers an hour, but at the same time we got two very small, very sorry, two very slow uh, chicanes. Uh, we got four points uh, where we turn at medium speed and then we have the exit of Ascari, which is the, say, the last fast chicane uh, where it can be considered a high speed track. So obviously the, the, comp the biggest compromise in Monza is uh, in, in terms of aerodynamics because you want to run low downforce to get as high speed as possible uh, at the end of the straights, but then the slow chicanes, uh, you would like to have a lot of grip there, so you, you would like to have high downforce. Obviously, given the efficiency of this track, the, the compromise goes always in the direction of very low downforce, to the point that Monza, together with Monaco, is normally one uh, of those two tracks where you develop uh, specific aerodynamic components uh, for this specific track which normally are used only here almost always only here uh, obviously Monaco being on the other side of the very high downforce and uh, other particularities um, uh, of this track is that it's, it's averagely bumpy um, and also because of this uh, sudden variation from high speed to low speed the brakes are under considerable stress from a mechanical point of view, from energy point of view. On the positive side though, the, the long straights uh, allow them to cool down. So normally the cooling and therefore the brake duct size is, doesn't need to be uh, excessively big because the, the, the brakes have time to cool down. But this, the mechanical stress uh, they, are, they, are, they, they have to withstand is averagely too, too high. And we will see what it, what it means um, later on. One little anecdote about braking in Monza is that um, almost every driver in almost every category during the championship when they get to Monza they said ah, can we please have a look at the brakes because the car doesn't feel like it's stopping normally and uh, this is very interesting because although the drivers are very experienced and they have come to Monza already the feeling um, of this uh, lack of uh, braking efficiency uh, is always reported obviously the reasons are double the first one is that uh, the low downforce means that also the car uh, has much less drag, so when they just lift the pedal, the throttle pedal, they don't get the normal deceleration that they expect from, from the car. Plus, again, the low downforce means less grip on the tires, and so that also affects the, the braking. Braking stability is one of the, one of the key issues to, to sort out in Monza normally. Although Monza is not the heaviest track uh, for, for brakes, it still requires uh, good braking performance because we have a uh, very high speed uh, sections followed by heavy braking and going some places under 100 kilometers an hour from well over 300 kilometers an hour. So let, let's go through a, shortly about what, what Formula One brakes are in terms of material. So uh, this is a brake disc. Basically, every wheel is, is, is fitted with one of those. Obviously, it's like let's say like in every modern road car but with a lot of differences. Uh, first of all, the material. Uh, in a road car, the discs are steel discs. This, this is carbon, which makes a, a very big difference um, because these brakes give, obviously, much better performance than a, than a normal car, but they give their performance only if they operate in a certain range of temperature, which depending on the material or the manufacturer, but let's say we could average around 400 degrees. So if the driver doesn't bring the brakes into temperature, say you or me were driving uh, the Formula One car, we wouldn't get any performance from the brakes. Basically they would brake very, very badly. Uh, these small holes that you see uh, here are vents. Uh, basically the, the, the air goes through and then there is a there are channels inside that need to cool the disc because obviously you want to have them hot but you don't want to have them too hot because carbon over a certain temperature oxidizes and this means that the thickness of the disc would reduce dramatically uh, very quickly and it could 
lead to a, to a disc failure, which obviously is a, is, a, is, a, is a major problem that everybody wants to avoid. Just to give you an idea, this is a, this is a new disc um, and has this thickness. This is a used disc uh, after, well, looking at it, I would say it's uh, after not a very heavy race, obviously. But if you see them side by side, you can probably uh, detect the, the, the difference in, in, uh, in thickness. Monza is a, is a very down, low downforce circuit, but what does that actually mean? Um, downforce uh, in, in Formula One is uh, almost as important in, as in the uh, aircraft industry, but for the opposite reason. Um, basically, downforce is the force which is generated by air when the air impacts a wing foil, or let's say a wing for, for ease of, uh, of explanation. Uh, in an airplane, uh, when, when the airplane is traveling, the air generates a force which lifts the wing and therefore keeps the airplane in the air. What we try to obtain is exactly the opposite, so to have a force which basically pushes uh, the car um, on the track because there is a relationship between uh, the amount of force, vertical force you put on the tires and the amount of grip that you get from the tires, which means that the more down force, this is called down force because it's a force pushing the car down, you can get from the car the faster you can travel around the corners. Obviously, nothing comes for free, so in general, the more you increase the down force, the more you increase another of the, param the aerodynamic parameters of the car, which is the drag, which means how much you have to pay in terms of straight line speed, because obviously, to put it simply, an easy way to increase the downforce is to increase the angle of the wings. Obviously, increasing the angle of the wings means that the wing faces more the wind, and this means that obviously it will act as an aerodynamic brake, if you want. So every track needs a compromise between how much downforce you want to be fast in the corners and how less drag you want to have in order to be fast in the straight. In Monza, this compromise always goes in the direction of reducing the drag to be fast in the, in the four points, which are all well, well over 300 kilometers an hour. And this obviously requires a lot of skill from the drivers to be as fast as they can with the little downforce they have in the corners. So how do we get uh, low downforce in, in the car? Or conversely, how do we get higher downforce in the car? The, the main uh, um, element which, is, uh, which dictates the, the downforce level in terms of tuning is the rear wing. The rear wings, we, we, have, a, we have a couple here just, just to show the main differences. Uh, one, the one on the right is, is a standard wing. The one on, uh, on the left is, is a low downforce wing. Uh, obviously, the, the, the items that, that uh, affect the downforce level of the wings are several, and they are all related to geometric, um, geometric parameters. It can be the inclination of the wing, uh, can be the size of the flap. You see the, the flap here is, is, is very small. The flap on this one is bigger. And in general, also the, the dimension of the wing, which can be seen, all, especially if you, if you see from it laterally. You, see, you will immediately see the, the difference of the main plane. This, this is what we call the main plane, and this is what we call the rear wing um, flap. And this is what we call the lower beam or the lower element. Since we're here, we can also see uh, this uh, device, which was introduced uh, already in, uh, in 2011. It's called the RS, and basically it is a system uh, which allows um, reduction in drag. Uh, actually, the RS stands for Drag Reduction System. Basically, when the driver pushes the button, this much faster than how I do it, flips up and then when the driver lifts the throttle or pushes the brakes or if he pushes again the button then he just falls down very quickly and so you, you recover your let's say baseline downforce level. Yeah, the general environment uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Monza let's say that the, the tarmac is, uh, is relatively bumpy so the track is relatively bumpy. Um, whether normally Monza always happens in the early September 
it is still summer in Italy, so it, it can get very hot, but it is a period of the year, of the year where the, the, the weather might unsettle. When it rains, it happened a couple of times, it rains really, really heavy, uh, but let's say you, you could get really almost every conditional, although the dry is, is, the, is the most likely. Obviously, if it rains, it puts an extra, let's say, uh, level of, uh, of difficulty because of the low downforce. Normally, when it's wet, you want to have as much downforce as possible. Technical briefing, Monza.